there, Empowered Peeps. I'm Ryan to the rescue. And today we're going to talk about dishwasher cleaning and maintenance. So maybe your dishwasher is working just perfectly, and that is awesome. That is the time to think about maintenance so that you can head off any costly repairs later. Or maybe your dishwasher is having some trouble. Perhaps it doesn't clean as well as it used to, or it might have standing water in the bottom, or maybe it's a little stinky. So if you use the maintenance and cleaning tips that I share with you today, my hope is that it'll fix those problems that you're already having. But if you're not having any problems, then it'll help maintain the life of your dishwasher and help it to function better and save you money. And when we're all done cleaning, I have two cost-saving and dish-saving tips that I wanna share with you that will blow your mind. For cleaning products today, I'm just gonna keep it really simple. I'm going to be using white vinegar and baking soda. And in this bottle, I have half vinegar and half water, which just is a convenient way to make the vinegar into a spray cleaner. And I use Liquid Cascade for my dishwasher detergent. And also, in just a little while, I'll be sharing with you a few different tabs that you can use to clean the actual dishwasher. And then, when we're all done cleaning the inside, we'll spiff up the outside too with a little bit of stainless steel cleaner. I'll also be using this scrubby, a little toothbrush, and some rags and towels. So you can grab all of these supplies too and clean your dishwasher along with me. So let's get started by taking a look inside the dishwasher and see what needs to be cleaned and maintained. All right, so you'll wanna inspect each of the racks in here. Mine has three racks and take a look at each of the pegs and the shelves in there to make sure everything's in good order. If any of the rubber coating has any breaks or cracks in it, then you can repair it with this product and you can just paint it on like nail polish and that'll seal up the rubber again. Now, in order to get to the filter and the screen in the bottom, I'm gonna take out the bottom rack and then while I am, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the wheels, make sure they are all in good functioning order. And then also just go ahead and take a look at the silverware rack, see if it needs any special care or cleaning or repair. Looks all good there. All right, my dishwasher is in good working order and it's relatively clean, but we're gonna see what lies below the surface. So let's take a look at the filter. You take that out by turning it counterclockwise and then pulling it out. Okay, that's pretty disgusting on the outside and on the inside. So that's gonna get a good cleaning today. Then we can also remove this screen just by pulling it up. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this dirty filter and screen into some hot soapy water that I have already prepared in the sink. Now let's just let it soak there for a while while we work on some other things around the dishwasher. All right, one super disgusting thing about my dishwasher is the side of these rack arms. OMG, that is putrefying. So apparently food is stuck on the sides and I'm going to clean that off with some baking soda and vinegar. Okay, that's better. I did not even know that was so gross in there. Okay, the top arm is nasty too, so let me take care of that. Oh my goodness, I am feeling so accomplished right now. Now I just need to do that on all the other racks. Now I'm gonna take out the lower wash arm, not by turning here, but squeezing down below the wash arm and you turn there by putting your thumb right here. Now with the wash arm out of the way, it gives me an opportunity to scrub around this area. And I'm even gonna scrub down inside the drain as well. And then you remove the top spray arm the same way by grabbing here, turn, and you can remove it. And then you put it back in place by putting it back up in that hole 
and turning it to lock it. The importance of removing the spray arms is this. So inside of these little holes, sometimes there are mineral deposits and then the water doesn't go through very well. Or sometimes even occasionally food can get stuck in there. Or what I've seen happen before is if I wash a jar that has a paper wrapper or paper tag on it, sometimes the paper disintegrates and then it ends up clogging one of these holes. So you can take these off and inspect each one of these holes to make sure they are working properly. Also, you can pour water into the arm and see if each one of these spouts is working properly. Yeah, everything looks good. Okay, now the spray arms are clean and back in place and we've had the filter and the screen soaking for quite a while now. So it's time to pull it out and give it a scrub. Be sure to clean the outside and the inside. It's pretty nasty on the inside. And now for a good scrub on the screen too. Okay, they're both clean and good as new. I'm proud about that. And now that we have the screen and the filter all clean, we can replace those by popping the screen down first and then lining up the arrows of the filter until it clicks into place. It's not at all necessary to clean the coils, but if you really want to, you can use some of your baking soda and vinegar mixture and just scrub the coils with a gentle rubbing motion and a toothbrush. Also be sure to clean around the door and be sure to get the rubber gasket. And I'm gonna do the gasket with vinegar only. It's important to make sure the gasket is clean because if you have gunk on that, that can actually impair the seal when you close up your dishwasher. And don't neglect the dispenser panels because they need a little scrub too. Okay, so we've done some of the preliminary scrubbing to get the major gunk off. And now I wanna give it a good rinse down and clean with vinegar. Vinegar is a natural disinfectant and cleaner. So what I'm gonna do is pour vinegar into this shallow dish, about a cup of vinegar, you don't really have to measure it. And then I'm gonna wedge it right down in here on the top rack, facing up. And that way, as I run the dishwasher, the water will splash in and splash out of there and it will gradually disperse the vinegar as the wash cycle goes. Then you choose the longest wash cycle that you have, and then you choose steam. I'm gonna want that on Sani, which is sanitizer. And then choose the highest temperature that you have, and then the wash zones, both upper and lower, and then you press start, and you're good to go. All right, now that cycle is all done. And let's check on this. The vinegar is sloshed out and it's been replaced with water from the wash cycle. And with my combined effort of the scrubbing that I did beforehand and the vinegar wash, I think it looks pretty darn good in there. So you can run a cycle in your dishwasher with just vinegar in it as a cleaner and a disinfectant. Or you can run a cycle in your dishwasher with just baking soda because that's really good at reducing odor and also cleaning. But I wouldn't recommend running a load with both of them together because as you know, when you combine vinegar and baking soda together, it causes a chemical reaction and we don't wanna have an explosion in our dishwasher. However, when you put them both together in moderation, it makes a great cleaning product. It's natural and very effective. Okay, the inside of the dishwasher looks fantastic. So now we're gonna to move to the outside and make sure that looks all clean too. So since this is stainless steel, I'm gonna be using this Wyman stainless steel cleaner. And there's a lot of products out there, so I don't guess it really matters too much which one you use. But I also like to use a really soft cloth and I cut up old t-shirts to use them as cloths sometimes because they're very soft and they're lint free. So, so you put a little stainless steel polish on here and then 
you need to be sure and wipe the stainless steel in the grain that it's going. So with this one, if you look close, the grains go sideways. So I'm going to clean it that way. Alrighty, all done. That looks gorgeous. Okay, there's a few more things I'd like to share with you. One, be sure to always use a rinse aid. And there should be a reservoir in your dishwasher for rinse aid. And when you pour it in, you can see blue show through this little window when it's full. Rinse aid is imperative to make sure your dishes come out clean and sparkly and don't have ugly water droplets all over them. I mentioned earlier that I would share with you some different products that will clean your dishwasher. This one's called Finish and it's a tablet that you can just throw in the bottom of your dishwasher and it can clean and run while you're doing a regular load of dishes. Some other great products for this purpose are Lemma Shine, Dishwasher Magic, and Afresh. And I'll list all of those in the comments below. So how often should you do all of this, you ask? Good question. So what I would recommend is every two months do some sort of cleaning. So in January, do a wash cycle with no dishes, just baking soda in there. And then two months later, do a wash cycle with no dishes, just vinegar in there. And then two months later, do a wash cycle with one of the tabs or the dishwasher cleaners that I mentioned, and just follow the directions on the product. That way you're cycling between three different products and your dishwasher is never going more than two months without a good cleaning inside. And those things are going to clean not only what you see, but also what you don't see. It'll clean the pipes and the drain and things like that that you can't get to. Also, these products are really good at keeping hard water buildup to a minimum. Years ago, dishwashing detergents used to have phosphates in them, and phosphates kept those hard water stains at bay but now they don't have phosphates in them anymore. So we have to go another route to keep the hard water staining to a minimum. So I have hard water at my house and I have some pretty significant hard water buildup at times, but after a good cleaning, I was able to get almost all of that off and it looks pretty nice. In full disclosure, I've had my dishwasher for two and a half years and I've never done this deep of a cleaning. But moving forward, I'm gonna follow the schedule that I recommended for you which I'm also gonna write in the description. All right, finally it's time to share those mind-blowing, cost-saving, and dish-saving tips that I promised to share with you. Number one, don't use too much detergent. Now, if you read the back of this, it says to fill the detergent dispenser cup all the way full and the pre-wash cup as well. But I've spoken to numerous dishwasher technicians and they say, no, don't do that. Only fill the detergent cup halfway and you don't need any for the pre-wash cup. What? I'm usually of the mind, if a little is good, a lot is better. So it has been my practice to fill both cups to overflowing and that's just too much. So if we cut this down to only half, we're saving money and our dishes won't come out cloudy. The reason for this is because dishwashers that are older than 13 years old, and I assume you don't have one that's older than 13 years, they use about 16 gallons of water in a wash cycle. So it needed a lot of soap, but dishwashers today only use about five to eight gallons of water in a wash cycle. So they don't need near as much soap. Now, if you use the pre-measured tabs in your dishwasher, go ahead and use those as is. Tip number two is don't scrub your dishes all the way clean before putting them in the dishwasher. Who does that? I know a lot of us actually do, but you're not supposed to scrub all of the food off of your dishes before you put them in the dishwasher. And the reason is this, because dishwasher detergent is designed to attack the food on those plates and attach itself to it and then wash down the drain with it. But if there's no food on the plates, then the detergent is attacking your actual plate and your glasses, and it can cause etching, which is what you can imagine. It actually etches and scratches into your dishes and glasses, and that cannot be removed. Instead, what we should be doing is brushing the big chunks of food off of our plates, and then go ahead and put your plate into the dishwasher dirty. And if your dishwasher is functioning properly, and you've put in the right amount of detergent, 
they should come out sparkly clean. So those two mind-blowing tips are going to save you time and effort and money and even save your dishes from getting damaged. Some exceptions to the don't wash everything off of your dishes rule are tomato sauces, mayonnaise, avocado or guacamole, and egg. Those things have to be scrubbed all the way off because they won't come off in the dishwasher. Also, as you know, if you have something that's baked on, then that'll have to be scrubbed off too. One more important thing to know is to always run your garbage disposal before you start a dishwasher cycle. That way there won't be any backup in the pipes. All right, friends, do you feel good about cleaning and maintaining your dishwasher now? I hope you've learned a lot and I hope you have found this video really helpful. If so, I invite you to click like and subscribe and also hit that little notification bell. That way you won't miss any of the how-to videos that we put out every week. Also, if you feel like commenting, I would love to hear from you because I'm just standing here talking to a camera the whole time. If I hear back from you, then I know that real humans are watching and benefiting from my content. Now let's set reminders in our phones so that we can stay on top of these cleaning and maintenance strategies to keep our dishwasher functioning its best. We can do it.